In this video we'll take a look at the unit step function which is very useful when working with piecewise defined functions and the Laplace transform. The uh, unit step function is defined as follows. It's denoted by the letter u and the function has value 0 if t is less than 0 and it has value 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0. Let's take a look at its graph. The blue here indicates the function itself and you can see it has value 0 until t equals 0 and then after that it has value 1. Now what we generally would like to do is um, choose some value c greater than or equal to 0 and define the following function u of t minus c which is simply a translation of u um, c units to the right so this is the function that has value 0 if t is less than c and value 1 if t is greater than or equal to c. Its graph looks like this 0 until we reach c after which the value is 1. So we can think of uh, this function as being a switch that switches on at time c. There are a couple other notations we should be familiar with. One is that sometimes instead of using the letter C, you'll see the letter H, uh, which stands for heavy side, which is the last name of a British mathematician, Oliver Heaviside, mathematician and scientist. So this is sometimes called the heavy side step function. Uh, the H is recognized by um, Wolfram, so when we want to use this with Wolfram, we should use the capital H. And another common convention is to, um, to call u of t minus c, sometimes u sub c of t. So you'll see those two notations used interchangeably. Um, some authors will use one and some will use the other. It's good to be familiar with both so that you can watch videos or read um, authors using either one of those two notations. Now we'll look at a simple application of the step function. Uh, let's define the function f of t to be 3u of t minus 2. So the uh, u of t minus 2 we can think of as a switch that turns on at time uh, 2 and takes the value 1 then. But we're multiplying by 3. So what this function f of t is, is it's a function that has value 0 until we get to 2, time 2, and then after time 2 it will have value 3. So its graph will look like this. You can see it has value 0 up until we reach time 2 after which it has value 3. So let's take a look at um, maybe a little more complicated application. If we look at the function here g of t equals 3 of 3 times u of t minus 2 minus 1 times u of t minus 4 this first part we can think of as a switch uh, that turns on the value 3 at time 2. And then the second part we can think of as another switch coming on at time 4 and subtracting 1 or adding negative 1 at that point. So after time 4, the function value would drop down to 2. So the graph's going to look like this. It has value 0 until we get to 2, at which point um, this part of the function comes on, turns on to value 3 up here, and it stays that way until this other part then turns on at time 4 and drops the value down by one unit to uh, a value of 2 from 4 on. Let's look at an especially important use of the um, step function. Here we've got the condition, we've got two numbers A and B. A could be 0. Um, it's 0 or greater, b has to be strictly larger than a, and we're going to create this step function. I'm using the other notation now, so let's remember this first part. Um, this is a function that comes on at time a and has value 1. There's a 1 that we haven't written out here. And then this is a function uh, that comes on at time b and has value 1, but we're subtracting it. So this whole thing will have value 1 starting at a, and then when we reach b, we'll be subtracting 1 from the one we already have, so the value will go back to 0. So the uh, graph of this function will look like this. 
it has value 0 until we reach A, at which point it jumps up to value 1 until we get to B where it drops back down to 0. So this type of function is sometimes called a box function. And what it'll be useful for is it allows us to sort of cut out uh, a piece of some other function. If we were to have some, uh, some other function, f, and we looked at the function um, f of t times uh, u sub a of t minus u sub b of t, what this would do is uh, this part inside the brackets would be 1 only from a to b and would be 0 elsewhere. So we'd end up with the function f showing up between a and b and then we'd have the function 0 everywhere else. So we'll use that idea in our next video um, where we'll take a look at using um, step functions to write single expressions for piecewise defined functions.